You're listening to Outriders. This is our weekly tech catch-up on BBC Five Live. And finally this week, Jamila, you've been catching up with a technology that you've been wired up to in the past. Wired up. Wired up indeed. Sensum, the company that creates real-time emotional intelligence tools, or in other words, it measures your responses to, say, media or music and then influences the medium you're looking at, They were at South by Southwest a few years ago when I went to go and catch up with them there. Now, when I saw them last time, the folks at Sensum had me wired up by my fingers to react to a film that I was watching to see what my emotional and physiological responses were. It was a bit strange, but it was very interesting. This time I caught up with Gowan Morrison, CEO and co-founder of Sensum, who described the company's latest product relating to music and how his systems work. Sensum works by marrying neuroscience using biometrics along with traditional market research and then with innovative visualizations we're able to show back how effective and how engaging pieces of content have been. We're measuring galvanic skin response which is your sweat response. When you have an audiovisual stimulus it goes into the nervous system, it's processed by the brain, the brain generates an emotion and you have a physiological response. And what we're measuring is the physiological response, which is highly correlated with emotions. With that, then, you're able to get an emotional engagement measurement against whatever that stimulus has been, whether it's an advertisement, a first cut of a feature film, a pilot of a TV show, or user interfaces in gaming. And so I understand now also you've been looking at music and kind of turning that equation around, so not necessarily our reaction to something or a stimulus, but using our current state to create something? Is that about right? Absolutely. I mean, when you uh, said this is where we've come from, you were there, the first first thing we did, that was an interactive movie, that was an interactive film experience where the audience's physiology selected what they were going to see and hear. We've always kept that creative vein. We've done several projects as we move forward. The latest one we did was called Mew. And it was to use your physiology and motion to generate your own unique bio song and bio artwork. And so you had a unique shape and sound as a result of your own physiology. It seems like for time immemorial that the idea of music creation has been something that maybe somebody else feels and that you react to. But to create something that you're already feeling, that seems like dancing to your own rhythm, I guess. Yeah, personal feedback loops. (laughs) Hmm. And so does this open doors to to different types of music or even the reasons why we use music, whether that's choreography or exercise or, or so many different ways, can that help with those situations? Everybody seems to have a music to their life. I have a theory, actually, that since we're all particles and we all vibrate, that the styles of music that we all synchronise and harmonise with are those that vibrate with us as particles, and that's why you have lots of people enjoy different types of music. So in the same instance, you should be able to vibrate and generate songs and generate pictures. But, I mean, it, it, it could go from anything from choosing playlists based on moods through to performing alongside bands and at gigs. When thinking about the sort of types of responses that we generate, I mean, you've, you've explained that it's it's galvanic, it, it's monitoring sweat, but, I mean, there's obviously a difference between having a reaction in a sweaty nightclub and sweating buckets, to put it colloquially. But, in fact, we, we do generate a response still also when we're quite chilled out, when we're quite calm. Absolutely. They may be subtler, but, I mean, if you are totally zoning out to a beautiful piece of music, you'll be moving on the emotional journey with it. Classical is the perfect example for emotional journeys, and they're very much like storytelling. You know, all good stories should take you on an emotional journey. Good classical music will take you on an emotional journey, so they are very synchronous, the emotion that you can have, and the kind of things that are going to trigger it from an audio and visual side of things. How about the equipment that you're you're using? I mean, I seem to remember there being quite a lot of wires. It was a somewhat curious and not quite but very nearly disturbing experience to be hooked up initially. But <laughs> how's the kit come along and, and is it more accessible now? Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that uh, everybody said at the end of the event that you were at was it felt somewhat Heath Robinson and... Um, that if we could make it into a mobile solution rather than a lot of wires into boxes, into computers, into other boxes, that there may be something in this in terms of taking it to market. And so we've we've sort of walked the road looking for partnerships and opportunities with hardware and, and really focused very heavily on what the software can do and making sure it drives use mobile devices as the hub for capturing and transmitting all sorts of data and for streaming media too. So we can give it a full 
mobile solution for wherever you happen to be, if it's in the home or in the cinema or at the gig or wherever, that that, that can actually take place. Obviously, you've been focusing on this research for many years now. What specifically have you found that keeps you curious and keeps you digging into this kind of technology? I've always had a fascination in sort of biology and technology and, of course, in media and creativity. And this is kind of a, a beautiful, happy place of all of it coming together. Just every single day, there's something new and, and in conversations with people, you know, you, you find out an awful lot about where we're going. And, and personally, we're heading like a steam train into the physiology age. We have the Microsoft Connect, we've got Siri, we've got thumbprints on phones, we've got all these fitness bands and smart TVs, and the, the list keeps growing. And every crowdsourcing platform on the planet has every day new prototypes for wearable technologies coming onto it. And you've got 3D printers and all that stuff's coming, an incredible rate of not. And yet there's still discussions about what we should do with social and a grand awakening to the fact that all these free things are actually free because somebody's making money from your digital self. My concern is that there's no conversations really happening about this physiology age because people are still learning about social and security and privacy of data. And we need to have a framework as we move into this physiology age that protects the digital self. I would much rather be in the middle of it, learning about it, feeling it, and maybe doing something about it than to just all of a sudden find myself in it. If we'd like to find out more about what you're doing and indeed these amazing monitoring products, where can we find you online? If you go to sensum.co, that's S-E-N-S-U-M dot C-O, You'll find us there, or Facebook, or Twitter. Gavin Morrison, taking the measure of an audience.